Jalen Hurts and the Eagles hosting Brock Purdy and the 49ers in the NFC Championship as we take a look at the most popular props for both quarterbacks. Hurts to score a touchdown at plus 119. He's had a rushing touchdown in four of his last five games. And Brock Purdy to go over his rushing yards prop of eight and a half. That prop has the most over bets and money of any player prop this weekend. Kickoff for the NFC title game, 3 Eastern on Sunday. Welcome in our heavy hitters, Vegas insider Todd Furman and the Wizard of Odds, Kenny White. Start with your favorite Jalen Hurts prop. And Todd, the simplest way for Jalen Hurts to exploit the 49ers number one defense could be on deep balls. Does that correlate with your top Jalen Hurts player prop? It does, Akeem, but I take umbrage with the way you read that rousing introduction in VO there. There was no mention of Nick Foles in the Philly special amongst the pantheon of Eagles greats as they look to try and get back to the Super Bowl and win the Lombardi Trophy again. But there is no doubt that Jalen Hurts throwing the deep ball is going to factor prominently in some of what Philadelphia wants to do for a lot of the reasons that you outlined. When you look at San Francisco, this is a team that's extremely stout up front. We know they can generate a pass rush. They're very good sideline to sideline with their linebacking core, but they leave a lot to be desired in terms of defending the deep ball. And when you look at some of the numbers, they're outside the top 20 in overall efficiency against deep passes. They're 26 in EPA for balls thrown down 20 plus yards downfield. And I think Philadelphia knows that they have a stable of horses they can let loose, whether it's Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, or the not so often used Quez Watkins, who had a big catch week one last year against these same 49ers. I think Jalen Hurts goes over 38 and a half yards on his longest completion come Sunday. Yeah, Todd, you thought of uh, Nick Foles. I thought of Reggie White. I thought Reggie White definitely should have been there, one of the greatest defensive ends in, in NFL history for the Eagles. Um, I'm going to go under in his passing yards, Hurts. So we can both win our bet, but I hope that you win yours by a half a yard, and 39 is the longest <laughs> reception and pass that Hurts has in this game. Um, the San Francisco defense, I, I, I think, will get after him in this football contest. It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a very physical game. Uh, on the year, they allow 241 yards a game, and and uh, Hertz is median for the entire season, 239. Last week versus the Giants, they really went to the run. I know they're not going to be able to run the ball against Frisco like they were against the Giants, but he threw only 24 passes, 154 yards last week. Um, I, I, again, I think the Eagles will try to establish the run as best they can in this game to set up the pass. So I'm going to go under in the uh, passing yards. Yeah, Kenny and Todd, I had to truncate that list. So I couldn't put all the names on like Nick Foles and Reggie White who I know you think of as an Eagle, but I think of as a Packer, too. So there was that conversation we had. And then we had Wilt Chamberlain. We took him off. Allen Iverson. I mean, there's a lot of Philly legends. I just, for the, for the sake of time, you know, we have to speed up our broadcast. We have to move along on our broadcast. For the sake of yeah, time. Due, due, to, due to time constraints. <laughs> let's go out to the, uh, the Bay Area there, and let's talk about the other quarterback in this game, Brock Purdy. Of course, Mr. Irrelevant, last pick in last year's draft. 7-0 and uh, this season right now. Undefeated also when you look at him. He's in a tough little spot here, though, guys. Historically, quarterbacks, rookies in this spot, they're 0 and 4 in the championship game. What about you, Kenny? What do you say here? What's the favorite uh, Brock Purdy prop in this NFC championship game? Also, no interceptions for Brock Purdy so far in the playoffs. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's just 0 for 4 because it's small sample size. If it was 0 for 16, I may really be worried about this situation, but it is hard for rookies uh, to get over the hump and get to the Super Bowl. And it's, it's hard for rookies in most sports, but. I will say it was much more difficult for rookie quarterbacks 25 years ago than it is now because they are so much more uh, well-defined in, in college and they're in, in more of a professional passing game and they're up against bigger and better players. And Purdy, a four-year starter out of Iowa State, he seemed to be ready for this and he has been incredible. Uh, he has been he has managed the game, but I'm going to go under in his in his passing yards as well. Uh, season median 213 and a half. We are going under 222 and a half here. And we're up against a really good Philadelphia defense. I did write down a note that his two highest rushing games so far this year, both were, were the two playoff games he's played so far. So uh, he is looking to get out of the pocket, a little bit more pressure from the defenses. So maybe that rushing prop has a little bit of play to it. But boy, it's awfully high at eight and a half. But I'm going under with him. It's going to be a tough game on the road against a good defense. Kenny, you mentioned it being a tough game for Brock Purdy. And that's part of the reason that I'm willing to lay the price that Brock Purdy does indeed throw his first postseason interception. Mm. He's lived a bit of a charmed existence so far on, at the helm for the San Francisco 49ers, but you look at the game plan that Kyle Shanahan has been able to institute each of the first two weeks. Against Seattle, relatively conservative in the first half. They started to loosen things up in the second half. 
and were able to get some separation against the Seahawks. And last week against the Cowboys, that game largely felt like it was played in a one-score realm. So there was no reason for Brock Purdy to have to cut it loose, take some deep shots, and try and create a little bit of running lanes for Elijah Mitchell and Christian McCaffrey. Kenny talked about how good this Philadelphia defense is, and they get after the quarterback better than any team in the league. They've accumulated 70 sacks uh, throughout the course of the campaign. They generate pressure at a rate on par with what we saw last week from the Dallas Cowboys. The difference being here, Philly has two elite cover corners on the outside. And when you look at San Francisco last year, when Jimmy Garoppolo led them into the conference championship game, he threw an interception in each one of those contests because Kyle Shanahan had opened the playbook a little bit. I think you have to be aggressive and take some shots downfield. It comes with obvious risk, and that's the reason I think Brock Purdy throws his first postseason interception on Sunday. Yeah, guys, those four rookie QBs previously, Ben Roethlisberger, Sean King, Joe Flacco, Mark Sanchez, all coming up short uh, in the championship game. Let's go ahead and recap the NFC Championship QB props. Well, Todd and Kenny, one's going over, one's going under when it comes to Hurts and uh, Brock Purdy there. For Todd, he's got Hurts' longest completion, over 38 and a half yards, and Purdy over the uh, half interception there. Kenny White, he's going under on both. Hurts under 250 and a half passing yards. Brock Purdy, the rookie, under 225 and a half passing yards. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.